Hello everyone, wanted to wait till after the season ended for Bush to do one of these videos, but today I'm going to be discussing my top 5 favorite Bush moments from the Big 2024, aka Bush's worst season of his career. Easily, <laughs> easily. It was, I don't think, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I believe he never had a winless season in his career which was 19, 20 years or something. He was part-time at one point, but I don't think he ever had a win this season. But he did this year, because all things have to come to an end in the big 2024. So anyways, uh, let's not waste a bunch of time. So uh, number five is the Atlanta finish. Now, this was the second race of the season, and there was a lot of hype around Bush in the offseason because he came off three wins. Now, he did have a playoff collapse, but he got to the round of 12, so it wasn't that bad. So everyone, so after Daytona, where he ran pretty strong, and then at the end, he just had no help, like, always. Um, you know, he was on the final lap, and he was in, what was it, like, second or third? And then all of a sudden, he comes, splits up the middle, has no help, unfortunately, but he splits up the middle, and they're coming to the line, and he gets uh, third by, like, I don't even know how much. It was, like, seven-tenths of a second or something. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. But... It was still nice, you know, I was like, after the race, I was like, oh, all right, I still have a lot of hype, even though he lost, like, he finished third, and I think he was the points leader after that race for the first time since 2019, five years, so I was pretty hyped after that race, if only I knew it to come, but, you know, anyways, uh, number four is the Dover pole, now, this was, at this point in the season, everyone could tell something was wrong with Bush, there was not, I mean, he was still in the playoffs, but he was not looking like his 2023 self and the team as a whole wasn't looking very good his luck was bad everything was bad he was bad everything was bad so then he went out and won the pole at dover which he did not do well at dover the year before so this was a big thing for us and uh he ended up finishing fourth that race and i was like oh maybe he's got a little bit of momentum oh, no he had no gone. more momentum after that but after that, um, number three is that one time at uh, Vegas when he took the lead from Larson on pure speed. I really liked that moment. That moment gave me hope. And then that hope faded away once uh, once uh, he, he he got a speeding penalty and finished, like, what, 25th? Ugh. But, yeah, I had hope after he took the lead from Larson, who's probably the best driver in the series right now. Joey Logano's just... A, fraud anyways on the number two the colts and steelers game now you may be wondering why this is on the list and it's because i have nothing else to talk about um i loved when this game happened because it really showed that the steelers were a bunch of frauds and that we could beat a good team and then it's been downhill from there but you know it's it's fine though it's it's fine but i really like this game even though richardson got injured it really showed our resilience as a team and we won 27 to 24 with Steelers who kicked our butts for years that was a pretty good moment anyways on the number one now um I enjoyed nothing from the season I can't name a I really can't other than the things I listed before and I really didn't even look enjoy those much looking back on now I enjoyed just about nothing from the season it was nothing but suffering and sadness just even like ever since he missed the playoffs at Darlington which was heartbreaking as hell because, I mean, it does a lot on the fan base when you're already out of the pl playoffs on points. And you go into Daytona where you're hyped up. And you choke on the last lap. And that's that's that. That, that, that really hurts the fan base and hurts everyone's morales. And then you back that up next week with a very, very close loss to Chase Briscoe, of all people. Who would end up hurting him later by not giving him room on with, like, 30 to go, and he was already a lap down, too, and then he just sits in front of Bush and wrecks him, which really shows the type of driver he is, considering Bush literally raced him clean for a win, and then Chase Briscoe just plows in the bush, you know, people can blame him, but, like, it's a lap car, you're supposed to move out of the way, so, yeah, uh, not very happy about that, so, yeah, it was nothing but pain and suffering this season, it was not fun, and uh, there's really not many p positives to take from the season, especially since RCR is involved in that whole cheating scandal or whatever, where they took uh, setups off of uh, JGR because one of their employees go gone rogue or something, I don't know. 
So there's really not any positives because, I mean, this could literally be the same team we get next year. Like, they could just roll out again and RCR is just a bunch of idiots again. Which would not be fun because that would mean he would go win this two seasons in a row. Which would, oh my god, not be very fun. Especially since Bush is turning 40 next year. But I don't think age really matters a whole lot in NASCAR because, like, Harvick was still... He still won, like, eight races. He was over 45, I believe, so... I don't think it really matters too much, because, you know, they can still... Even Mark Martin, he was still championship contender at, like, 50. So I don't think it really matters that much, but the problem is the team around them. They're just not very good, so... I don't know. Uh, more of a story. Did not enjoy his season. I don't think any Bush fan did. Uh... Go Colts, where we suck too.